welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel thank you so much for being here don't forget to like comment and subscribe so this is part two of the comfortable versus the uncomfortable um, and so today we're talking about the uncomfortable so the definition of uncomfortable is causing discomfort or annoyance to destroy or disturb the comfort of to deprive quiet enjoyment to make uneasy to pain so the uncomfortable has been really uncomfortabling. I'm going to say it. It's uncomfortabling right now. It's doing what it's supposed to do. Um, which is push you into the next season that God is calling you to. So we're going to talk about the story of Job. I feel like we know this story all too well. Um, if you have not read the book of Job, you need to read it. Like, it's really good. So let me tell you a little bit about Job. Job was living his best life, right? He was wealthy, he had a large family, he had flocks. He was blameless and upright in the sight of the Lord. But that all changes when Satan stands before God and he asks if he could test Job. So Satan's claim is that Job will curse God once everything is taken from him. But then God kind of reacts um, that claim by saying that my servant Job will not curse me. He gonna keep pushing and do what he needs to do, okay? So, Satan is given permission by God to test him, but he is not allowed to touch him. The Bible says, touch not my anointed. So, Job was anointed, which is why Satan couldn't touch him. Now, before we continue, a lot of the times we give Satan so much power over us, and we say, Satan this, Satan that. But, Satan is not omniscient he's not omnipotent he's um he's not El Shaddai he's not El Roy he cannot be at two places at once so we give him so much power when it's not the enemy it's really God allowing the enemy to test to see what you gonna do okay so the first test Job loses his livestock his servants and his children they're all wiped out and so Job's response in Job chapter 1, verse 20 through 22, it says, At this, Job got up and tore his robe and shaved his head. Then he fell to the ground and worshipped in all this. Job did not sin by charging God with wrongdoing and said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I will depart. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. That right there, that was just beautiful. Because that's what we should be doing when we are tested, when we are tried, when all hell is breaking loose. When things are being taken from us, we should come to a come with a posture. We should come to God with a posture of praise and of worship. So that's what Job did. So then the second says, Job is afflicted with painful sores from the soles of his feet to the crown of his head. Now his wife tried to tell him to curse God. God done took away your family or your, your kids, your servants, your livestock, so curse him. Who who do you have in your ear talking? What where's the chatter coming from? Okay? So Job's response. In Job chapter two, verse ten he says, He replied, You are talking like a foolish woman which she was Shall we accept good from God and not trouble? In all this, Job did not sin in what he said. So, a lot of the times when you come to first come to Christ, you think it's just about to be all peaches and rainbows and strawberries and sunshine and there's not going to be rain. Well, let me tell you, news flash, there is going to be rain. There's going to be thunderstorms. There is going to be every season in a season. If that makes sense. So, the third test, Job's friends, um, they try and give him opinions on his situation. But it's not from the Holy Spirit. They're speaking out of their flesh. They're speaking of what they think um, Job should do and what... The reason why his situation is occurring the way that it's occurring, again, out of their flesh. Um, and then God 
turns around and starts asking Job questions. Um, and so, again, who do you have in your ear? Who is, who are you talking to about your situation? Because who you have around you, who are you surrounded by, matters. Because if you have the wrong person surrounding you, they're going to tell you the wrong thing. And then you're going to think and believe what they said over what God said. So you have to be careful about who you are surrounded by. So in all this, Job did not curse God. Job chapter 42 verse 10, it says, After Job had prayed for his friends, the Lord restored his fortunes and gave him twice as much as he had before. Beautiful. Just because you are going through a storm, through a test right now, and you feel like everything is being taken away from you, everything is being stripped, just know that God will restore what was lost. You don't, God never takes a thing away from you just to not give you something better. He does the complete opposite. He takes away, but he also gives back. And what he gives you back is better than what you had before. What happens in the uncomfortable? So you start to lose people who were only supposed to be with you for a season. There are a lot of people that we try and take with us into the next season that cannot go with us. They cannot go with go where we're going. They cannot carry the weight of what you carry. They cannot carry your assignment. Only you can. A stripping takes place. Things start to um, come to the surface so that we have to address it. And you can't keep pushing it to the side and pushing it up under the carpet. You have to address it. A breaking takes place. You are pushed out of your comfort zone. In the time of the uncomfortability, you seek God more than ever. When, in reality, even in the, un the comfortable and the uncomfortable, you should be seeking Him regardless. So in the uncomfortable, you have a redirection and you have a transition that takes place in the uncomfortable. Now, I know, because I've said it to myself, that the uncomfortable is uncomfortable and it's uncomfortable for a reason it's because God is trying to take you to a new level there is a new season there's a new task that you have to do that are not going to work if you are still operating in the old so the Bible says that the old man has passed away the new man comes this is an old season that God is trying to get you out of, which is why he gets you out of your comfort zone. God uses what we are going through to turn around and bless somebody else. So you're not going through what you are going through for no reason. There is a reason. There is a purpose for what you are going through. Now, we should be like Job. Again, come to God with a heart of worship and praise on our lips. That no matter what we are going through, we are still going to praise and we're going to worship the Most High. Because He is going to carry us through. It might not feel like we're being carried, but He's carrying us through. And so, I'm reminded of one of my sister's um, sermon that she preached on. And she said, how many times are you not going to realize that God has placed that different spirit within you? You are different. You are different on purpose. You are different for a reason. I think about I think about the song, I'm different. Yeah, I'm different. Think about it. You are different. You are not like everybody else. God has placed a different spirit within you and that different spirit is the Holy Spirit. The uncomfortable is uncomfortable for a reason now don't get me wrong I don't like it because in the uncomfortable it makes you want to go back to your Egypt it makes you want to go back to where God has taken you from and that is not what we should do we should not go back to our Egypt because again our Egypt is dry it's desolate there is nothing there for us 
So God is trying to get us out of our comfort zone. He's saying that I have to make you uncomfortable because you are too comfortable in the place that you are, you are in right now. This place right now that you are in was only meant for a season and you are so comfortable in it. So I gotta make you uncomfortable. <laughs> okay. Alright, Lord. I, I have to make you uncomfortable. Yeah, you don't like it. So? You're going to be uncomfortable. And I'm going to keep making you uncomfortable until I bring you out of this old season so that you can enter the new season. Because the new season has so much greater, it's so much better. But the only way you can get to this new season is if I make you uncomfortable in this old season. So the uncomfortable is what pushes you into the next season. It's in the uncomfortable where you gotta face some stuff. You gotta face some giants that are standing in your way. There's some stuff you, you gotta face. You gotta look it in his eye and say, get thee behind me, Satan. So you will no longer have power over me. Again, we give the enemy too much power. Take your power back. Because you have it, the uncomfortable makes you take a long look at yourself in the mirror and address what needs to be addressed. It reveals the real you. So, in the comfortable, you, you can't really see the real you. You see what's comfortable, what's good, what feels good. That's what you see. But in the uncomfortable... You see the real you. You see what's inside of you. So God is revealing to you the you that you did not see in the uncomfortable in the comfortable. He and then when he puts you in the uncomfortable, he's revealing to you the you that you don't even know. Because the you in the next season is not going to be the you that was in the old season. Preach. I, I'm I'm preaching. Okay, Lord. Stop. Calm down. Okay. So, <laughs> I, okay. In the uncomfortable is when you seek God more than ever. It's when you should seek Him. You should seek Him in, even in the un, in the comfortable. You should always be seeking Him. But the uncomfortable reveals where your priorities lie. God is asking, are you going to worship me? Are you still going to seek my face every morning? Although you don't see what I'm doing, although it hurts, although you are being put in some uncomfortable situations. Even though you are crying yourself to sleep, even though you are hurt, are you still going to seek me? Or are you just going to give up? Because giving up is comfortable. It's going back to your Egypt. Are you going to be so comfortable that you want to escape the uncomfortable just to go back 